in sales, especially in, in business to business and client calls, is what we call the 101 principle. You talk to 100 people, you get 10 people who, who, would, who are interested in your products or service, and then you close one, at least close one. That's, that's 1%. Mm -hmm. But the 10%, the 10 people who are interested, these are your leads who will close, you can close in the next few weeks. DX Your Life and Business, helping you in digital transformation. All right, so hello and welcome to um, the new episode uh, in our Digital Transformation Academy podcast. So today we're going to discuss and elaborate more insights about sales. And the main topic today is why salespeople fail. So, but before that, I am thrilled to be joined uh, by my new co-host, uh, Mr. <laughs> Paul Familara. Uh, he's a longtime friend and partner. Uh, so Paul brings a wealth of experience in business, sales, marketing, and more to our discussions. Um, he's currently based in New Zealand. So I got to know Paul first uh, as one of our clients in his companies. Um, we then turned into a business partner by launching a startup that solves some pain points in the travel industry. Uh, but because of the pandemic, as you know, the travel industry is one of the industries that was greatly affected. And our project was put on hold. But since we both are innovators, so we have some fresh initiatives that we are excited to share later. No. So without further ado, I'd like, to, I'd like Paul to share more of his story before diving into our topic. So, sir, how are you? So maybe I'm as a very start, good, David. Yeah, as a start, yeah. you can share more of your background and uh, possibly a brief backstory. Okay. All right. I'm very good, Dennis. Thank you so much for inviting me here and being part of this um, new initiative uh, of uh, podcasting and giving sharing ideas to audiences. I'm very thrilled and happy that, um, you know, we'll be able to share a wealth of knowledge to um, a group of audience who has the same interests as ours or whatever it is that we're sharing with them um, about. I am a, as you said, an entrepreneur. I started as a, an employee as well, um, graduated as a technical person. I'm a mechanical, uh, PS mechanical engineering graduate, worked for 11 years at Caltex um, in the uh, product development side and then sales and then marketing. So all my learnings and knowledge in sales and marketing was derived from really selling technical products. And um, of course, with, with that length and breadth of um, experience, I was able to learn a few things, tricks and, and theories as well from great people, from my mentors, from my managers and so on. Right. And alongside with um, a lot of business people that I met with, of course, on the other side of the spectrum, being a client uh, of a salesperson and a salesperson um, working with a client from um, consumer products to technical products to even service products. Marami talagang, there's a lot of um, you know, changes in, in sales from, from a decade ago, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right. And, and it is really important that um, we you know, we, we, we run and work uh, according to the times and, and, and growth of, of this. Sure. So, yeah, um, my background being a salesperson was really about um, selling technical products at the same time. At this point in time, I still am really interested in a lot of um, technical products, but I have ventured as well in consumer products like uh, meat sales or... Um, um, immigration support in terms of marketing and so forth. My biggest, um, uh, our biggest achievement, because I share this um, uh, growth with my with my wife who came from the industry, was working with the BPO industry. So right. for the last 17 years, we have been working in the BPO industry as a part of our uh, main business, and uh, we provide uh, marketing um, there. So. There is a difference between sales if you're talking about consumer sales or business to business or B2B. Um, 
Yeah, B2B. So so there are levels that you have to learn. And, and that's why I'm very happy that, you know, these things I experience very well. This company of yours is, um, you're referring to is Innovate Marketing, right? Yeah. Correct. That's right. Innovate Marketing. Yes. Yeah, I believe that's where we met. Um, <laughs> and right now you're in New Zealand. Uh, yeah. So how's in you know, New Zealand at the moment? And uh, what do you do in the, like, what do you offer there in the market? All right. Um, first of all, New Zealand is totally different from the Philippines in terms of size and business opportunities. Right. You can see that we are more matured here in this country, but because of the size, which is 5 million in population compared to Philippines, which is 110 million, you're talking about 20 times more, right? right. But of course, you look at the... Uh, propensity of, of, of selling as well. How are the, you know, how deep the pocket is for people in the Philippines and New Zealand. So there, there are pros and cons. Um, what we have here in New Zealand at the moment is an extension of the Innovate Marketing. So we're doing uh, social media support, website development. Uh, in terms of being able to get clients here at the very uh, affordable price because we utilize and we take advantage of Philippine manpower to right. create and develop these things. And that's why there's a great opportunity for us to be able to penetrate. Right, right. Yeah, and um, maybe I mentioned earlier, no, um, you know, I'm excited also to share uh, our current initiative with uh, Magnalux. I believe Magnalux started uh, in the Philippines before I joined, right? Now we are pivoting uh, to offering digital courses, which actually I'm currently offering. But um, because, you know, both of us wanted to um, scale up the digital course uh, industry and not offer not only here in the Philippines, but also in uh, New Zealand and offer more courses. So I think that's the thing that uh, we have to look out for. Uh, we're currently developing uh, a lot of uh, content uh, for this uh, initiative and um, we'll be announcing soon uh, yes. the launching of this uh, business. That's right. Uh, um, Magdalas, Dennis, before you joined in and uh, uh, became part of the, the company, we yeah. started the company as a digital solutions uh, company more right. on um, narrow casting. So the technology of reaching out to different uh, locations using screens, digital screens, was the beginning of that. LEDs, TV, uh, and right. so forth, the narrow casting uh, solutions. And then we moved to cybersecurity education. Uh, we were part of uh, Academy for Cybersecurity. And of course, now, as you said, we are excited to introduced including the ones that you have already introduced accounting and digital transformation into this um, uh, company to make sure that we we can offer more than just accounting digital marketing to our audience and, and that's good collaboration is really always an advantage to audience or to the learners right and in the past several months i've been really contemplating about how to grow this and reach out to more people and help particularly small business owners or even, you know, uh, uh, employees or career people to, you know, uh, grow their knowledge and skills about, uh, especially now the technology is really, you know, in uh, in the past two decades, right? So, yeah, with this collaboration, um, I think uh, my search is over. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really excited about this um, initiative. Yep. That's okay. Good. So, yeah, let's dive into uh, today's topic. Yeah, and um, let's see what insights you know Paul uh, brings to the table. Uh, again, the topic is um, why salespeople fail. Probably um, Paul can share a brief experience in you know his early struggles uh, in in sales and um, why you think uh, people or salespeople fail when they start uh, this career? Uh, thanks, Dennis. Uh, as I said, I, I graduated as an engineer, a mechanical engineer. So my thought was always on to organizing. Sure. So 
I think there are three main reasons, and for me, these are key reasons that I learned from. The stumble block for me before was organizing myself, um, who to meet, where, when, uh, especially if you're like a traveling salesperson, you have to organize your day as well uh, as to how many clients are you going to meet, and that's for a B2B process. But if you're, let's say, a salesperson for a consumer product, you need to meet um, uh, different departments that you have to encourage. So that uh, stumble block for me before was organizing my thoughts, my day, making sure that everything was um, well organized. When I was able to make things really coordinated, that became easier. And uh, not by bragging, but you know, I'd like to let you know that on my first year of sales, I was able to meet target as early as October. So, oh, yeah. so, um, no, it's actually September. So October, November, December, that last quarter of the year, my manager was just asking me to play golf with him because uh, we were able to meet uh, our target as early as that, which is really about knowing yourself, knowing your limitations, and then developing it. How young were you uh, when you started? So I start. So I joined <clears throat> Caltech at uh, after graduation. Uh, at the young age of uh, 22, I believe, 89. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, 22 for five years in in, mechan in engineering class in right. engineering school. So and then on uh, was uh, was able to work in a department uh, and then moved to sales. So at 23, I was a salesperson mm. for lubricants and fuel, and oh, that see. was a, a turning point for me. To learn more things and i think i realized that i have the knack for it as well right well in my case uh you know i think i started at that age as well but my struggle really is um more of uh because i'm an introvert as you know <laughs> i'm a you know i'm a developer i'm a programmer so i have really no people skills when i started in sales but um since i'm uh I entered into entrepreneurship. I think yes. I have no choice but to no choice. <laughs> equip myself with, uh, you know, I, you know, at that young age, I remember as presenting to you know executives of banks and uh, our clients, and uh, I was really, you know, uh, nervous on how to go about it. I had I have no proper training. I didn't go a formal training. So. Uh, in to sales. be honest, Derek, the first time I met you, we were so quiet as well in the meeting. Right. So exactly. I said uh, that there are three things that for me major in terms of uh, that you need to know and need to have as a salesperson. Mm. First of all, er earlier I mentioned organizing, being, being organized. Second, I believe this is about really knowing your customers and yourself. I mentioned a bit about knowing yourself, but, but now I'd like to focus on really knowing your customers, really knowing who they are, what they need, and asking the right questions like what, where, when, why. These are open questions that really dig deep into the psyche of your of your customer, of your client. And they'd be able to give you what are the problems, what are the pain points that you need to solve. Right. And as, as, as a salesperson, your products are always save, so, say, um, uh, answering or solving a problem. It's always offering a solution. May it be a product that's being uh, used as a dishwashing product, which solves a solution for easy washing or a, a, a software program that needs to be constructed or developed to be right. able to solve a problem. So then going through, making sure that you're confident enough to ask the right questions, being able to um, dig, dig deeper or, or delve in into the the psyche of your customer, right? Um, sometimes a salesperson would have, you know, learned some tricks and use those techniques, but they use those techniques without empathy, just like you know, just following to a script, which doesn't really um, make you move further into the conversation or into the relationship with your with your client. So client relationship develops as you become more em empathic or or caring for your customer and knowing the needs that they want right um Pr probably more to that you know the authenticity and um you know being likable being honest 
in uh, the, the things i mean in 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 doing your sales pitch not focusing more on the uh, product features but yes uh, looking at the um the the needs and pain points of the customers before you even uh, you know do your pitch uh, right that's right um and i think the last one that i believe would be uh, to avoid failing in sales is um, of course closing your your offer Yeah, yeah, and then you have this one is a skill that you have to master, mm -hmm. because without closing an offer, without closing a sale, you're not actually making a sale. As they said, a sale is not a sale unless you are being paid, and you will not be paid if you don't close a sale. So, um, I had a, a few salespeople in my team, in our organization, that were very good at you know, proposing, setting up meetings, getting leads and everything. But at the end of the day, percentage-wise, in terms of success, they're very low. Why? Because they don't know how to close the sale. Uh, I believe it is more of confidence, knowing mm -hmm. what you have. Because this time around, you know what you have to know what you have mm -hmm. and what you're offering. If it's a good solution to them, is it a comparable solution to a competitor? Or you can create something that's, you know, good enough to be a win-win for both of you. For the company and for um, your your customer or your client, so closing a sale is another thing. Uh, to avoid failure, it is best that you practice this. Right. Best to practice how your customer will uh, will react to your questions, and at the same time lead them to the solution that you are offering. So again, listening, of course, and then this is the time that you the part that you will be able to talk, give the advantages. And of course, you can point out the disadvantages as long as there's it overwhelms the advantages of getting your product at your service. And that's um, uh, a formula for you to succeed in terms of closing the sale. Right, 100%. I think a lot of salespeople are also, you know, too slow to take action. They are focusing on the wrong things. Like you mm. said, they say, they focus too much in lead generation, right? But uh, they don't really take care of their funnel in, in, in their warm leads or their hot leads up to closing. So people probably, they lack motivation or they have fear uh, of rejection or failure or some people are just overthinking things, you know. And um, me, in my experience, I believe building relationship is one... Uh, a key technique in closing sales, you know, not just following up, not just asking for something, but really building relationships um, and finding like common ground and uh, pinpointing uh, the pain points of the customer is uh, a, a key technique in uh, closing, right? Um, in terms of sales speech, um, I think you've already mentioned, no? uh, but um, a lot of salespeople also uh, lack of uh, preparation in doing yeah. sales. Uh, so that's why, you know, they they cannot uh, secure confidence in uh, executing the sales pitch, right? So if you're not prepared, then uh, you know failure will be uh, the Imminent. direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yun ang, ano, doon ka mapupunta. No? So failure, if you That's don't right. uh, uh, prepare, you don't do research uh, about the client, um, and you don't really find uh, what what they need. No? Um, so in, in terms of, you know, trying to understand your, your clients, uh, as you mm -hmm. mentioned, uh, you, you'd like to... There are different clients, and there are really hard clients, to be honest. Right. And sometimes it... it kills your motivation if if you find or, or meet a client that's really hard to crack mm -hmm. and and um, for a salesperson trying hard to uh, crack a client that's really hard to crack is is a uh, an effort that is unnecessary mm -hmm. to be honest and then then you have to accept this there we sometimes in in the in sales, especially in, in business to business and client calls, there's what we call the 101 principle. You talk to 100 people, you get 10 people who, who, would, who are interested in your products or service, and then you close one, at least close one. That's, that's 1%. Mm. 
-hmm. But the 10%, the 10 people who are interested, these are your leads who will close, you can close in the next few times, or in the future, in the next few weeks, days, or months. Right. Which is really important. So it's an acceptance as well. Right now, I can't win this, but moving forward, I will be able to win. Or right now, I will, I will not win this hard customer, but because he is hard or she is hard to uh, crack, I mm. would be able to learn from this um, experience. Mm. Now, however, to be honest with you, in my experience, a, a hard customer are always the best customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Once you win a hard, hard cracking customer, they are your best customer. Why? They try to crack to 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 test you as well. Right. Once they've tested you, the trust is already there, and the relationship, as you mentioned, is an easy building relationship. Right. And and uh, by the time you already have developed the skills to manage objections and you know rejections with your products and services right so it be it will be easier for you to you know to sell to other you know easier to deal uh, clients or people you know yeah that's a good point yeah and, yeah, and mm. maybe sometimes um, some people or sales people they they just take this job i mean the, the this role as a job right but in reality, they just hate what they do and they're not really built for it. Yeah. So if that's the case, then you know, try to contemplate, take, contemplate on it because like in my case, to be honest, I have a love and hate relationship with sales. I love it because um, I am able to solve you know, uh, people problems or business problems. You know? But at the same time, as I shared earlier, I'm an introvert. I'm not naturally you know, uh, equipped uh, uh, for sales, but um, the thing that I do is I coach people instead, so they they do the legwork. And then well, yeah, just like to add, Dennis, sorry, just like to add on that. No, using a salesperson or someone who will be able to do the things that you can't do. Again, it's part of accepting your weaknesses. And if exactly. you don't know what are the things that you don't know what to do or or hard to do, you don't know how to utilize. Uh, people or tools to be honest there, there are a lot of uh, software tools nowadays right like the sales force or what have you uh, sales uh, CRM uh, software that you can use and the CCR, CRM softwares are so like spoon feeding you already like after you've added the name you call this you add that you put right. this speech and then you, and so forth you know these are all spoon feeding again sure. Uh, a relationship, a relational aspect on that. Computers are just there for you to, to be guided. You are, you, or, or your people are, 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 are needing support as well in terms of um, being able to learn how to embrace uh, a customer as on its entirety. Right. Because I liken selling as like uh, a relationship between a boyfriend and girlfriend when you start, you know, uh, mm -hmm. courting uh, a girlfriend, or if you're a girlfriend starting to uh, attract a boyfriend. So that relationship is always there. Right. Lighten yourself into that position, and you'll be able to find success. Yeah, um, yeah. Sales automation and sales management. I, I really look forward to dive deeper on that. Stay tuned as we will uh, do more episodes about sales management and um, sales automation in our future episodes. I'd like to share with you a few scenarios of um, people failing, salespeople failing in the in, in their job. Oh, yeah, go, yeah, so. and, and normally, um, and in those three major things, being organized, knowing your customer, knowing yourself, and being uh, able to close. But all of these things, if you don't have them yet, if you don't have the skill and um, ability to do so. Um, try to check yourself if you're in this uh, scenarios already right. that points to failure. So for example, if you go to a, a client and you knock on the door and you're, you're expecting to meet Mr. Um, X and Y, and then he was not available. Mm. Someone who has to meet you, which is on the higher level of uh, uh, on on the organization, right? And then you felt like, oh my gosh, I don't think I am ready to meet this person. <laughs> that that 
and in your conversation you you stump you you fumble in your words you cannot mm. express right. or what have you so in that regard try to and, and this is my principle every time i go to a meeting i also pre prepare myself to meet the president right to meet the owner yeah because to be honest these are the people that you really want to encourage because they're the ones who will make decisions if you if you're looking at just meeting a manager or a supervisor or the procurement department head they will still have to submit your proposal to the head to the top level who will make decisions that's why it's really important that you prepare yourself to meet the decision maker because in that sense it's re you're ready at any given time that's right. one scenario in that sense i know um the thought of you know uh, doing your research and looking for the customer pains and needs, you know, and being authentic is something. If you're really equipped with those um, those things, I believe you'll be ready to do your pitch with, to any uh, departments or up to the president level of the company, right? Here's another scenario, then, is that uh, I, I feel like it's important for any salesperson to, you know, uh, foresee or uh, watch out if you're not there or if you already experienced this. Um, a salesperson who has uh, brought uh, a laptop to the meeting and then all of a sudden the laptop doesn't, you know, work, which means your tool is not ready to be, to be uh, used. Now, what would you have to present to the um, to a client or to a customer uh, without the tool in your head? You should be able to master the things that you can um, say, or ask for a paper and pen, or ask for a board or what have you right. to demonstrate the product for uh, for your for your client or for your customer. Mm. Um, if you will notice in the supermarket. The salespeople who are selling or having taste tests or stuff like that, um, these are demonstrable selling, as they call it. So being able to demonstrate is sometimes more powerful than just showing a PowerPoint presentation. Right. Yeah, the execution of the pitch uh, is really, as you said, powerful, really. In my experience, um, being enthusiastic, you know, when you deliver your your pitch is really important as well. Yeah. Well, going back to um, I, I think we I mentioned earlier or we met, we discussed about um focusing too much say in lead generation right, mm. uh, and not doing uh extra steps in closing you know, but on the other hand, um not spending enough time in growing leads and focusing too much in hot leads will also have an impact, right? So my question is, what do you think is the balance uh, between growing sales and closing sales in terms of managing your time uh, and effort? Correct. So in an organization, there are people who are really good at developing leads, or there are people who are really good at closing um, leads. Mm. Now, uh, if that is something that you are not able to do as a single person, then you have to use automation um, or use someone else, mm. um, which means it's it's really important to use leads uh, generated via uh, whatever automation, social media, what have you, or being able to collaborate with an organization would be able to provide you with leads in the industry. Otherwise, you have to develop a team to have you know um, this uh, skills and, and uh, develop a, a good balance. So when you say the, what what balance is it? Again, if you look at the principle of 110, one, if you're not able to develop 100 leads for your one sales today, today I mean, or this week depends on what your uh, your business target is. Mm -hmm. One uh, sale per week would be good enough for your business if it's a large scale business, or one sale per day is good enough. Then. Um, you you will not be able to meet your target. So a okay. balance is based on your target and and your your salespeople's ability. So work on a hundred ten one principle. It might you know give you if it's a bonus if you get two 
or if with, with just 50 leads, you'll be able to get one, that's that's a bonus. Right, but right. then again, come up with a principle that makes you drive, uh, makes you work hard or drives you to work hard to get that number. Right. They always uh, say that uh, sales is just a numbers game. You know, the more uh, quality leads that you have, then, uh, you know, the more sales or deals that you'll be uh, closing, right? And then um, another point is that going back to doing your your pitch, right? Um, I believe poor messaging or not doing storytelling is also one factor um, in uh, delivering your sales pitch, right? Um, I believe creating re re relatable stories, like in my case, when I started... Um, uh, the beginning of my pitch is always, I mean, after uh, interviewing the customer, is that how we started the business. So a, a story where we started in the in a small condominium uh, with my brother or something like that. You know, I think that resonates to the customer and that, um, you know, um, gives you a, like a unique uh, uh, factor compared to your competitors, right? So something like, um, I think stories really resonate to people, you know, than just introducing uh, yourself and your products and services. Yeah, um, could your clients or co your customers really would relate to live or, or real stories, right? If you have an example of, uh, in, your, in, this, in your business, that you were able to solve, Tell that story, just just a short one that leads to success or victory. Or if you have a sample of uh, a situation that hasn't been sold, but similar to your client's need, then tell that story and tell them how you'd be able to um, come with a solution to uh, to be able to uh, solve that problem that they have. So yeah, there are several things, but then again, you know, uh, just like when, when you have a child or a baby that uh, if you want them to go to sleep, right, you tell them a story um, because that develops bonding and trust and that right. develops relationship. Yeah. Well, my last uh, point here, um, you know, that contributes to uh, failure is when you stop learning. Mm. You know what I mean? So... Um, as you know, like for example, in the technology business or industry, uh, you know, innovations and technology upgrades are really fast moving, right? Actually, right now, almost all industries uh, need technology to survive. Um, and if you stop learning, then um, I believe that leads to failure. Like for example, now, if you don't ride on uh, social media, if you didn't ride on uh, process automation if we didn't try it on like right now that the trending uh, platform is chat GPT have you heard of that oh yeah I've been using chat GPT <laughs> for the last three weeks now right so <laughs> yeah so if like right now if you there's a lot of AI platforms where for example you have a long form video if you want to repurpose them it will automatically cut the videos and whatnot chat GPT you can um you know, um, speed up the process of writing uh, and um, uh, the process of um, anything, basically. Or, for example, for your products and services, if you don't uh, research or learn about what your competitors are doing, um, then, you know, you are not future-proofing yourself uh, in your uh, business or in your uh, career. That's true, that is. At, at my age, and uh, I'm sure it uh, shows to, to the audience how old I am already and my, <laughs> my, uh, uh, my length of time in the industry right. and, and this, um, in this business, you know, I've never stopped learning. Mm. To me, in front of the computer, I have like two screens when I work, three screens sometimes, including my, my phone. Uh, while I'm doing something and my my other eye is learning something else, either in YouTube or or uh, a book or what have you that's uh, available to me. Uh, and that's why when ChatGPT, as you mentioned, was introduced more strongly last November when it was launched for free, 
uh, we know that's going to be paid in the next uh, in the future. But you know, while it's free, I was able to uh, hook into that immediately, learn what are the things that's in there, and then try to to test it. You know, signed up for free, and then uh, learn how to test it. I'm not promoting Chat GPT. There are other AIs uh, AIs available, but these are ones of you know who are really in the mainstream at the moment. Which if you're not there, then you're already behind. Right. So it's really important that you learn uh, as quickly as possible, learn as many things as possible. It might not be related to what you're doing right now, but maybe in the future. Exactly. Yes, agree. Okay. So anything else? Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm glad that I'll be able to share this uh, my my insights as well to you, Dennis, and to the audience. All right. So that's uh, a wrap uh, for today's episode. We hope you learned something new about why salespeople fail and what you can do to avoid these uh, pitfalls. So remember, success in sales requires hard work, dedication, and a willingness to learn and adapt. Okay, so it was an absolute pleasure to have uh, Paul with us today and uh, future episodes. Um, so stay tuned. His expertise truly will add so much value to our discussions so we hope you enjoyed learning from him as much as i did um don't forget to tune in to the next episodes for more thought-provoking conversations and uh, insights so our topic uh, well may be about the basic framework in sales business and development and in the future would be uh, basically this is a sales uh, series uh, for this season um, and then we'll go through uh, some topics about, like I said, sales management and sales automation. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that you've um, invited me and be, being part of this uh, new endeavor, Dennis. Uh, as I said, if you are an introvert, I am, you know, I try to stay away from uh, public view as much as I can because I'm a family. You know, I always value my my family. So I always try to be to be private, but uh, I think it's just really a, a good time to right. expand the horizon of of my my craft. And if it would be able to share uh, my insights and and my experiences to other people who are learning at this point in time and and growing, um, I'd be happy to. Again, if you have the purpose of sharing the. Uh, the community will always share back to you. So that's my principle and I'm happy to be part of this. Dennis, thank you. Yeah, same here. So yeah, until then, thank you for listening or watching and uh, stay curious. The Extra Life and Business, have a great day.